So you want to grow house plants in your fish tank to remove nitrates. Plants like pothos or peace lily or monstera. But you may be wondering, well, how many of these plants do I actually need in order to remove nitrates effectively and reduce water changes? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today here on Plant Life Project. Unfortunately, there is not a magic number that I can give you to answer this question because there are so many different factors at work that can de ultimately determine the number of plants needed. And these factors can vary from tank to tank. And we'll talk more about this in a few minutes, but I can show you the simple method that I use to gauge how many plants will be needed over time, no matter what size tank you have. It's a way to measure the progress to see whether the plants are having an impact or not. Well, if you're just getting started and you're not sure what kind of houseplants you want to use, then check out my previous video called the top five houseplants to reduce nitrates in your fish tank. And once you've decided on the kind of plants you want to use, don't get too hung up on the number of plants that you might need just yet. The important thing is to just get started. If you want to start with one plant or a few cuttings, you can always add more later if it's needed. If you want to start with a tank loaded down with plants, you can always remove some later if it gets too crowded. Just remember that tanks with a higher bio load or greater number of fish are likely going to need a greater number of plants or larger size plants in order to be effective. If you're starting with a potted plant growing in the soil, then you will need to remove all of that soil and wash the roots and the leaves thoroughly before placing it in your tank. And these plants will need time to adapt to growing in the water before they actually begin filtering the water. Check out this video to better understand the process of adapting house plants to grow in a fish tank. Well, now I'm going to share with you the simple steps that I use to gauge the effectiveness of these plants at filtering the water over time. And it relies primarily on water testing. After I set the house plants in the tank, I will begin testing the water every three or four days and we'll do a water change if the nitrate levels look like they're at or above 40 parts per million. And after the adaptation period, when these plants are actively growing, I will begin to see a reduction in those nitrate levels. When the nitrate levels fall to 20 parts per million or less, I will stop doing water changes, but I will continue testing the water once a week to make sure those nitrate levels are remaining stable. Well, over time, as these plants grow and balance out the nitrate levels, you will begin to see how many plants are needed in proportion to the bio load of your tank in order to filter the water. And this method doesn't give you a magic number to start with. As I said earlier, there are many different factors at work that can ultimately determine the number of plants needed and they can vary from tank to tank. Factors like how much light are the plants getting? Uh, how many fish do you have in the tank? What size fish? You have a gravel substrate? Is it a dirt substrate? Do you have submerged aquarium plants? Is it a brand new tank? Is it a five-year-old tank? So there's so many things going on. That's why I recommend to just get started. Don't get hung up on the right number of plants you need. You will figure that out over time by testing the water and as the plants grow and get more established. Now, if you're not seeing a reduction in nitrates after the adaptation period or four to six weeks or so, then you may need to add more plants, especially if you're dealing with a tank that is fully stocked or has a high bio load. Also keep in mind that plants need light to grow. Even if they are touted as low light plants, as many house plants are, uh, they may need supplemental lighting in order to be effective at nitrate removal. In the riparium lighting video, I will show you some inexpensive, easy ways to optimize your lighting needs. To summarize what we've talked about today, select the house plants you want to use and just get started. Do regular water testing and perform water changes until those nitrate levels fall to 20 ppm or below and continue regular testing to make sure those nitrate levels are remaining stable and finally be sure to provide adequate lighting. These are the steps that I use to make sure the number of house plants that I've selected 
are filtering the water effectively and reducing water changes and I'm confident that they will work for you. Well, be sure to check out those other videos I mentioned. Their links are in the description below. And please hit that like button if you have found this content helpful today. And thank you for watching. And until next time, remember, it's all about the plants.